Hi, I'm the little handyman. I've got a little hand. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a process called ammonia fuming. This is a chemical process that makes wood darker. I'm gonna go over the different equipment that I need to do this process, and we're gonna do a demonstration on six different types of wood. We've got some white oak, red oak, cherry, African mahogany, maple, and pine. And we're gonna put them all through this process. I'm gonna show you every step along the way so you can see how it progresses. And even if this process isn't for you, stick around because at the end we'll have a big reveal. So let's say you have a, a wood project and there's some beautiful grain to it, but you don't like the color and you wanna change it. Well, you could slap on some stain, but there are some problems with stain. It will run, it will blotch, it's kind of messy. Parts of the wood will absorb a lot of stain and other parts will absorb very little so you can get an uneven result. Also, when you put your top coat on to finish it, well, some of that stain can leach into that top coat and cloud it. So how about we try a different process? Luckily, we can change the color of wood through a chemical process rather than just slapping some stain on the outside. So ammonia fuming works by having the ammonia interact with tannins in the wood. You may have heard of tannins because we make oak barrels and store wine and whiskey in them so that the tannins from the wood get incorporated into our alcohol and make it taste better. So the tannin content from one species to another species can vary greatly. White oak has a lot of tannins, whereas maple doesn't have many. And from one tree to another within the same species, there may be some variation in the amount of tannins. And then within a single board, you'll have areas with a lot of tannins and areas with very few. But that's very predictable. So here I have a cherry board, and there's this dark part here and a light part here. The dark part is what we call heartwood. This is the inner core of the tree, and it's the part of the hardwood we want to use in our projects. This area is very rich in tannins. The light part is what we call sapwood. This is from the outer rings of the tree. It's very low in tannins, but we can usually determine what part is heartwood and what is sapwood by say rubbing some water or mineral spirits on the wood when we're working with it and we can see areas that have very low tannin content. So let's talk about our safety equipment. This stuff is dangerous and deadly. We cannot handle it without proper safety equipment. So first thing, we need a respirator. A bandana, a dust mask, a surgical mask, those won't work. We need a respirator that forms a tight seal on our face. And we're gonna need cartridges specifically for ammonia. A whiff of this stuff can knock you unconscious, the fumes are toxic, and it reeks of cat pee. Get the proper cartridge. It says ammonia on it. It also says methylamine, so it's kind of like you're playing Walter White. Next, we need eye protection. Safety glasses aren't going to cut it. The fumes from this stuff will burn your eyes, and if a drop gets in your eyes, it'll make you blind forever. So you can use splash goggles like this, but I found that the problem with these is that they don't form a tight seal around my face if I'm wearing the respirator. So I use some swim goggles. They're airtight, watertight, and they protect me from splashes. Finally, my skin. I roll down my sleeves and I wear heavy duty rubber gloves. Your latex or nitrile gloves aren't gonna cut it. You need thick, heavy duty rubber gloves because if this stuff gets on your skin, it will burn. So wear proper rubber gloves, proper eye protection, and a respirator. So let's talk about the type of ammonia we need. The higher the concentration, the faster this process will work. So if we use household cleaning grade ammonia, it's not gonna work for weeks. This is called aqua ammonia. This specific bottle is 28% concentrated. It's very potent, very toxic stuff. You cannot find it at the hardware store. I got it from Amazon. It doesn't have prime shipping, but that's okay because I wanted all my safety equipment to arrive first. You can't handle stuff this toxic without proper safety equipment. High concentration ammonia is what you need, but you have to handle it safely. 
So one other thing that I'm going to be using in this process, and it's optional, is tannic acid. It comes as a powder and you mix it with water. And when you spread this onto your wood, it's going to add tannins to the wood. We're going to see how this turns out with our demonstration. But to make tannic acid, you get this bottle. You can also get it on Amazon. We're going to mix three teaspoons into eight ounces of water. That will make our tannic acid. And then we're going to spread it on all of our wood samples. So for this demonstration, I have the six samples here and I've split them all in half with tape. On one side I've marked the T. On this side is where I'm going to put tannic acid and the other side we're going to leave bare. So each sample has been sanded up to 220 grit so they're all consistent and the six samples we have here are white oak, red oak, cherry, maple, African mahogany, and pine. We're going to spread some tannic acid on the, all of these and then we'll get them in our tent. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to build our tent that's going to hold all of our ammonia fumes and keep them trapped around our project. So I've got some scrap lumber here. We're going to build a skeleton for this tent out of some scrap lumber. It just needs to be big enough to go around our project. I'm going to be using this for a couple projects, so this is going to be a little bit bigger because I have some other things in mind. So I start by ripping some pine boards down to one and a half inches wide. This is wide enough that it'll hold up the frame, but not so wide that I'm wasting wood. Then I cross cut those pieces to a length appropriate so that the whole tent will fit around my project. Next, I start assembling those pieces into rectangles. I clamp everything down so it stays square. These will be the sides of my tent. And then those are screwed together to form a box. And this will be the skeleton of my tent. I use some three millimeter plastic to be the skin. You can find this in the paint department of the home store. First, I wrap the ends and staple pieces down to cover those. Then I wrap plastic all the way around, leaving a flap on the bottom, but again, stapling it down. And then I duct tape together all of the seams to make my tent airtight. Okay, so we're outside now where there's plenty of ventilation. We've got all of our samples prepared, and I've also prepared a control for each species so we can check the progress of the ammonia. I'm going to load all my samples up into the tent, gear up, and add the ammonia. With all of my gear on, I uncap the ammonia and pour it into a paint tray. This is wide enough that plenty of ammonia will evaporate and fill the tent. Once I lower the tent, this is just going to set on its own for the next 24 hours. Alright, we're... hold on a minute. Yeah, you got to wear your safety equipment. But anyways, all of our samples have spent 24 hours in the ammonia. Then I gave them a little bit of time to off gas in the fresh air. Let's take a look, see how they turned out as bare wood. And then I'm going to put a little finish on them so we can see those colors really pop. Here we have our white oak and even bare, you can see the dramatic difference that the ammonia makes. And with the finish on, you can see why white oak is commonly chosen for ammonia fuming. Next, we move on to our red oak, which takes sort of a weathered look after being fumed with the ammonia. And that still stands out even after we apply some finish. The mahogany takes on sort of a deep red tone from the ammonia fuming. And with finish, there's a stark contrast between the orange and the brick red after ammonia fuming. The cherry gets a little darker and duller from the ammonia fuming. And even when we add the finish, it takes on a nice, rich, dark tone from the ammonia fuming.
So the pine is actually quite interesting. The tannins have a substantial effect here. And that really pops out with the grain, especially when we add the finish. And the maple is quite surprising because of how much of an impact the tannins make. And with the finish on there, the figure really pops thanks to the ammonia fuming and the tannins. All right, so that was pretty interesting. If you're gonna try this out yourself, remember you have to take all the safety precautions. If there's any other wood treatments you'd like to see me try out, go ahead, leave a comment below. And remember to hit the subscribe button because next week we have a step stool video coming out. I'm gonna build the whole project. You'll see everything step by step. And I'm gonna use this process on the project. So thanks for tuning in. And remember, knowledge is a power tool.